Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to cover how to charge, discharge, and store nickel-based battery packs using Tenergy's TB6B Smart Charger. This charger is compatible with nickel cadmium and nickel metal high drive battery packs that are 1 to 15 cells. We'll use this battery as an example for today's tutorial. It's a nickel metal high drive battery pack with a nominal voltage of 9.6 volts and a capacity of 2000 mAh. After plugging in the cable, the charger menu will look like this. Press the mode or decrease buttons until you see the nickel metal high drive program. If your battery is a nickel cadmium, keep pressing the mode or decrease button until you see this NICAD program screen. Since my battery is a nickel metal hydride, I'll select nickel metal hydride program and press enter to select it. Press the decrease and increase buttons to select the mode you want. There are a total of three operating modes, including charge, discharge, and cycle. Let's get into how to charge it. First, connect the battery connector to the charger. Make sure the wire colors are aligned, black to black and red to red. Press the decrease and increase buttons until you see the charge mode. Then press enter to select it. You can change the value from 0.1 amp to 5 amps by pressing the decrease and increase buttons. To know which current to charge your battery, you can follow this formula. Max charge current is equal to battery capacity in amp hours multiplied by 1C. This battery has a capacity of 2000 mAh or 2 amp hour. The maximum charge current will be 2 amp hour multiplied by 1C which will give us 2 amps. Please note that constantly charging the battery at its maximum charge current will produce a lot of stress for the battery and may even damage it. So we'll charge this one at half a C, which is 1 amp instead. You also have the option to switch between auto or manual charging by pressing the decrease and increase button at the same time like this. The auto mode is good for beginner users because the charger will automatically apply an appropriate charge current for the battery pack within the upper current limit you select. This will lessen the stress on the battery. While manual mode is more suitable for experienced users, the charger will apply a constant charge which is selected by the user. This will make the charge time faster but at the same time add more stress to the battery. I'll select auto mode for now. Then press and hold enter to start charging. During charging, you'll be able to keep track of the charge current, the battery's voltage, the charge time, and the charge capacity measured in milliamp hour. The charger alarm will go off for about 5 or 6 seconds to let you know when the battery is full. We recommend removing the battery right after to avoid unnecessary contact. That's it for charging, let's go on to how to discharge. The discharging process is also similar to charging, except the discharge current will range from 0.1 amp to 1 amp. In the nickel metal hydride battery program, press the decrease or increase button until you see the discharge mode. Press enter to select it. Adjust the discharge current by pressing the decrease or increase buttons. This value will be up to you to choose. The higher discharge current, the faster the charger drains your battery. I'll select 0.5 amps for now. Press enter to go to the next setting. You'll need to select the battery minimum voltage by pressing the decrease or increase buttons. The recommended minimum voltage of nickel metal hydride battery is 1 volt per cell, and for nickel cadmium is 0.85 volts per cell. This battery is a nickel metal hydride and has 8 cells, so its minimum voltage will be 8 cells multiplied by 1 volt, giving us 8 volts. I'll change this value to 8. Now, press and hold enter to start the discharging process. The operation screen is the same as the charging screen. It shows the charge current, battery's voltage, and the discharge capacity measured in milliamp hour. The charger's alarm will go off to let you know when it's done discharging. Please remember to let it rest for about 20 to 30 minutes and recharge it again to avoid overheating and overdraining your battery pack. Now that this is done, let's move on to how to cycle the battery. The cycle mode repeatedly charges and discharges your battery pack. This is necessary for some batteries to allow them to reach their peak performance or to recalibrate them after being in storage for so long. Between each cycle, the charger will pause for 1 minute by default. We recommend changing the setting for more than 20 minutes to allow your battery enough time to cool down. Without cooling time, the internal heat of the battery pack may grow and damage your battery. To change the cooling time, continue pressing the mode button until it goes back to the main menu. Then press the mode button or decrease button until you see user setting programs. Press enter to select it. Press the decrease or increase button until you find this waste time screen. Then press enter. Now press the decrease or increase button to adjust the rest time. I'll set ours for 30 minutes. And then press enter to confirm. Now let's press the mode button to go back to the main menu and then cycle the battery pack. Press the decrease and increase buttons until you see the nickel metal hydride program. Then press enter button to select it. Press the decrease or increase buttons until you see the cycle mode. 
then press enter. Now you have the options to choose whether you want the charger to discharge the battery first, then recharge it, or the other way around. Press the decrease or increase button to change the options. I want the charger to discharge first, so I'll select this one. Now I'll press enter to go to the next screen, and then I'll press the decrease and increase buttons to change the number of cycles I want the charger to run. I'll choose three cycles for our example. Press and hold start to enter cycling. The operation screen should seem familiar. It's the same as the discharging screen. When it's done, the charger alarm will go off to let you know that the process is completed. That's it for today's tutorial. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. As always, feel free to drop us a comment or question down below. We'll see you next time.